Okay, hello everyone. Welcome to VisualBasic.net tutorials. Today's tutorial is about exceptions. Okay, uh, to understand exceptions, let's say now that we are having this simple program. You enter two numbers and divide them. The code for this one is that you are gonna get the values from the text boxes, divide them, and then display the result into the screen. So now let's run this program. It's very simple, straightforward. So let's say you want to divide 10 by 2 and you get the value 5. But if you want to divide it by 0, you get an error. Okay. Uh, now, how do you make your program smart enough to detect such kind of errors and treat them? Well, to do so, there is a special kind of statement. It's called the try statement. You would try to try hit and enter and you will get this code okay now after the uh, the try state uh, the, uh, the try keyword you will place all the code that you want uh, you want it to execute without any exception without any problem so you place this one here okay now if this code is executed successfully then no problem nothing will happen the other part is here, the catch. This one will only get executed if there is a problem in this part, in the try part. If there is any problem inside the try section, uh, the execution will go into the cache, catch section. So now uh, we're going to display a message box. You are trying to divide by zero. Okay. So uh, let's run this. Okay, let's say you have um, seven and you want to divide it by two. Okay, uh, since we are using integers, uh, the values are rounded out. No problem. Let's make it eight to make it more accurate. Okay, now if we want to divide by zero, press this one. You are trying to divide by zero, as you can see. Now. Uh, to demonstrate it more clearly, I'm gonna place a breakpoint here and uh, I'm gonna press this one. So the execution now is in this uh, into this statement. This one ha has not been executed yet. So go to debug and uh, press step over. You can see the execution didn't go to the message book, instead, it went to the exception statement. Debug and uh, step over now it, it's inside this part so you are gonna get the message okay uh, so as you can see when there's a problem the execution stop all the other statements will be ignored and the execution jumps to the catch part uh, however there's something very important here you can see this ex and its type uh, exception the ex is a special type of object that give you details about the error for now, if you place your pointer on the x, you, you can get the uh, error, and it's an uh, arithmetic operation result in an overflow, which is actually uh, uh, it will result in a value of infinity. Now uh, you can see more details into this one. For example, sorry, if you press the plus sign, you can you can see a number of things. Uh, for example, uh, where the error happened. Uh, the the stack and the, and the line where where the error is. So if you check, for example, this error, you'll find that uh, you'll find that it's in form one dot vb and the line number is fourteen. Okay. So actually, if you place the pointer here, okay, and and you you come into the uh, into this one. Sorry, this is the pointer here and you come into this indicator you'll find it's actually in line 14 as the error message is telling you so you can detect where the error exactly is okay of course the end user is not interested where the error happened all you have to do is to tell the the end user uh, that there's some kind of error 
okay the the details of the stack and other stuff uh, are useful for you the programmer because you can save these into a file a debug file and then the end user can send you that file so that you can fix your program if there is some form of bug okay uh, well I, I guess this explains it now I am gonna modify this one and display more details about this error. For example, now I'm gonna display ex dot uh, uh, stack trace. Okay, and now uh, this helps me identify which function is uh, is triggering the error. So now I'm gonna write ten and value zero and press divide. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't. Okay, so now I, I am get, getting the error. So the error is at Windows uh, application form button one click, which is the name of the function. Okay, and then I, I am gonna get, I am getting the location or the line where the error is, line 14, as you can see. So uh, pretty much useful information. Okay, uh, in some cases, if there are multiple causes of errors, you might want to use the description uh, 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 sorry uh, sorry the, the message uh, property and the message is usually uh, describes the kind of error okay so now I'm gonna use 10 0 and divide and you can see arithmetic operations of the overflow so this is a general description of the error and the other ones used to tell you where the error exactly happened now this is one kind of error the try catch can help you uh, 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 can help you identify many other types of errors for example I, I am gonna try to, uh, I'm gonna make another kind of error here dimension C as collection and as you remember we usually have to make C as a new collection to create the actual object uh, now, uh, uh, now uh, sorry, let it be making T because we already have a variable C. So now I am gonna make this kind of error D dot add 22. Okay, since this one is not assigned, we are gonna get a different type of error. So let's run here and uh, 10, let's use 20. And press divide, and now I am getting uh, I am getting a different error. Object reference is not uh, object reference not set to an instance of object, and uh, this is because I I didn't set the value of D into a, a new collection. I just told the compiler that D can store an object, but I didn't allocate the required resources. Okay. So basically, you can see one try statement can catch different type of errors. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, there is uh, one last thing about this: is that the try catch can have a finally part. Now, this one, uh, what the finally part is like this the try section is executed if it works perfectly fine it will jump into the finally part and execute it as well otherwise it will go to the catch section and then go to the finally part in other words the finally part is always getting executed okay so uh, you can either eliminate the finally part and write the code after the try statement or uh, you can just uh, use it like this uh, it, uh, and, and, and write uh, the code here okay so this is the last tutorial in visualbv.net uh, sorry in visualbasic.net and uh, we did not cover all the subjects but this uh, can be considered like a starter for learning the language um also uh, I will be starting a new set of tutorials I haven't decided uh, which one to uh, which kind of tutorials to to start working with but uh, there are three options for now uh, which is using visual basic with uh, 
databases uh, using Joomla or uh, or uh, tutorials about C Sharp. So if you are interested in any one of these, please let me know. Um, that will be all. Thank you for watching and have a nice day. Bye bye.